Warrior Mindset Podcast. We are your guide as you make your way through life, getting better 1% every day. We believe that life is lived and true victory won through adversity. Nothing easy is ever worth it. We believe in the warrior ethos and support those that choose to walk that path. Well, you're you're back again, man. Uh, you challenged me to do a part two, and I accepted the challenge. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so I watched all the videos you sent me. <laughs> Good. Um, I don't know. I don't know where to start though. Uh, let's start with the beginning. Okay. So we touched on it a little bit. Um, what What are your intentions with uh, going down this rabbit hole of self care? I guess. Um, well, primarily for my wife and kids, mm -hmm. that's the numero uno for sure. Um, I don't know if I've said this on our previous talks while we were recording, but I'm getting a second master's and it's positive coaching and athletic leadership. Uh, and I've learned a lot about positive psychology, which is okay. very interesting. I was honestly never really familiar with like the concept of it overall. <clears throat> and the things that stick out with me the most of it is like the, the status behind this journey of what's called like the, the happy life, the good life, the meaningful life. And I, it's the meaningful life is the last or last, if you will. Uh, I can't remember if it's the happy life or the good life. That's, that's first within your, mm. uh, self-proclaimed journey or newly defined journey in life or whatnot. Uh, but it, it, it's a cool concept of going from identifying where the change, where a change needs to occur. Like something's happened in life to where like, Oh shit, I need to probably recognize this change needs to happen. And then identifying your character strengths and then taking your character strengths and applying them to your life to find out you or me or I, or if you will, mm -hmm. whatever, and then entering the meaningful life, which is then putting those character strengths forward and then adapting them to whatever you quote unquote worship. And that sounds religious. The reality is like in my case, I'm in the meaningful life. I now recognize this and that's for my wife and kids. My meaning is to put forward my primary character strengths to help my wife and kids as much as I can, given the limited skill set that I do have uh, in recent time, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Like I've had to learn quite a bit. Um, so I actually made some notes on one of the videos specifically that I sent you, uh, if we have the time to kind of go over it and I don't know if, yeah. it, if it works this way, but, um, if there is a way to like, can you, can we do like an overlay in this video, like play the audio or the video of the, uh, the, the time pieces and then talk about it from there? Is that possible a little later? Uh, yeah, I can put those in for sure. Okay. So I have the video pulled up and I can copy paste it whatever you you need in that regard but it's more like i want it's really important i've listened to that video now since i sent it to you probably four or five times it's the 28 minute long video which uh, one psych uh psychedelics the the uh crap <laughs> the effects on the brain and physiology yeah the simian uh, uh karimadech yes you yeah. know one thing i also noticed those those videos a good amount of them are from six years ago yeah uh, yeah you sent them i was like Wow, it's kind of uh, almost a decade ago. Yeah, like what the fuck? Sorry, <laughs> but six years ago? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, how has that not been more? Uh, well, the maybe... first dude, like we were talking about, um, uh, Rick Doblin. Yeah, he's and, the founder of Maps. Well, when you realize that they were starting to do this work like in the '60s, over here, just in the Western culture. Yeah, and then they shut it down, and yeah. like made it all illegal i mean it's kind of insane that it's, they you know even back then they knew something was up and um you know well i don't want to go down the rabbit hole of like big pharma taking a dump on the project and stuff but it yeah. definitely feels like it it um so at, at the end of the the video the psychedelic effects of the human brain and physiology yeah. like he says that why would this be legalized you know it has no reason to be illegal but it is because stuff <laughs> yeah. because big pharma and stuff um yeah because they don't sell it no, no i mean they're they're i don't know why they're honestly giving in to finally doing it uh, because you know, pharma has to fund 
the psilocybin pills, the psilocin pills, right? right. The, I mean, the shit yeah. that they give them in the clinical trials, like they have right. to. Uh, well, at least as far as I know, I could honestly be giving bullshit information there and not really knowing it. But mm -hmm. as far as my limited understanding goes, that's what has to happen. I mean, it has to be regulated first and so on and so on. Um, Makes sense. But <laughs> it's, we don't, like you said, we don't want to go down the rabbit hole. I have too many <laughs> uh, strong opinions, yeah, yeah. but they are empirically based. Right. I don't want right. to, they're backed. I don't want to. Cause a stink. But anyway, you asked me the question, why the rabbit hole? My family, for sure. Um, and a key piece of what, I, what I've taken away is we're born with the ability to have the uh, more. We are born to have more brain activity and, and communication internally. And as we grow up, it goes away. However, mm -hmm. it's still there. So there's this thing that the guy talks about called the default mode mechanism or no, the one second, I have it right here. Uh, b -b 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 default, default mode network, sorry, default mm -hmm. mode network. Uh, and that's what we all live in currently because we, you know, they said that saying think outside the box. Yeah. Well, that box is our default mode network. Okay. And you know, we use it with like, common things such as, you know, Hey, we have to think outside the box, look at things through another angle. Well, do we actually have the ability to do that in some cases? Yeah, sure. Probably. But when it comes to self care and, and, and identity, n not really anymore uh, because like, you know, I'll mention briefly about the ego. The ego is our troubleshooter and we perceive ourselves to be who we are based off of what we're, of, of what we're told and who, uh, of what, of who tells us who we are mm -hmm. or what tells us who we are. A gene, you're a black belt. Therefore, you you believe you are Gene the black belt, or right. that's just a silly example. Or right? you get the idea. Yeah. And the reality is, it's basically a, a false portrayal of us. It, it's our our ego is our troubleshooter that has us in a cage on a tugboat, and the tugboat is pulling us a direction that's away from who we actually are. And I'm going to get ripped apart for saying that. And I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> I challenge people to listen to the uh, lectures of Alan Watts yeah. and uh, definitely Carl Jung. Cause like this shit is, it's super cool. And it's, it's very helpful to, for people to find this and, and back at that. Yeah. And that I'm going to get it right. <laughs> it's all flipped on my hands. I'm sorry. Right. But that, that's kind of the primary reason as to why the rabbit hole is now. Okay. At first, it was the first stage of positive psychology of finding the good life or the happy life. And I, I'm pretty sure it's the good life with you're forced to have a paradigm shift. And if you keep fighting the chaos that's been introduced to the paradigm that you're currently living, it's not worth it. And if you believe it to be worth it, you, you're going to lose everything. Let's... um. Let me say for anybody who's just sort of they grabbing this video, they haven't watched the, the part one, um, not necessarily a part one, part two, but uh, so Dan, and you correct me if I'm off base here, but you have been, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to use the word experimenting, but it's a little deeper than that. You've been experimenting with, uh, uh, what, what do you want to call it? Psychedelics? I've been actively researching the effects of psychedelic on mental health and self-care. Yeah. And you've been doing it. To yourself you've been utilizing it I, I think you said you've been working with your wife you're now going into it i'm going to say semi-professionally professionally um yeah. I, I would strongly research. agree with that <laughs> um, i mean technically it's not professional because i'm not hired by sure, some type sure. of de entity but no I, I don't fuck around gene as you well know like this yeah. is stuff that's very serious i mean even when it year even back in college when i was trying to understand pre-workouts i did a case study on myself for, and researched the ingredients of pre-workouts and <laughs> well no shocker here but the longer the list of ingredients the worse it is for you <laughs> makes sense no kidding um yeah I, what you said is is quite correct um i'm definitely awesome. researching it not recreationally i mean by definition recreationally using it but I'm not right it's, it's not to be like yo dog let's party like no this shit isn't used to party this shit is used right to to, to enter your subconscious to help figure you out 
So let's yeah. let's set it up for anybody who's popping in for the first time. Uh, right. How does that how does that work? How does it do that for you? So not for you, but for you know for the you the the royal you I guess. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's what they call a uh, selective serotonin agonist. Uh, so it's going to promote your ability to, in a sense, uh, get outside that box we mentioned earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. That 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 box we're so conformed to it, and it's it's a fear, an unrecognized and an internal fear to escape that box. And once once we kind of take a substance that helps us eliminate that box or, or the surrounding barriers of the box, which the literal the literal thing is through that default mode network is it, it actually shuts down a, a good amount of blood flow to that region and, and opens up other synaptic possibilities uh, that allows to suppress the sensation of like fear, terror, but however, you know, you talk about this, you hear about the shit about like your know, bad trips and whatnot. Well, Right. The bad trips are just the experience in the subconscious. The more fucked up you've had or experiences you've had in your life, the more you're going to probably ex experience a terrifying uh. point within your uh, trip, if you will. Right. Uh, the trip is quite literally to your subconscious. And that's why there's often a sensation of, of you don't see colors, you feel them. And each color is set with a state of emotions within your mindset, within your well-being, your upbringing, et cetera, et cetera. So like, that's kind of a layman's way of saying like it allows you to it allows your brain to go into a state of sleep while still being present. So you can travel this void of happiness, terror, contentment, whatever. To figure it out it doesn't matter if it's the most euphoric experience or the most terrifying experience is going to be a remarkably learning experience a remarkable learned experience uh, or learning experience you're you're going to know so much about you and i believe in the video that some of the the dude talks about like some of the people in one study they they equate the sensation of being as impactful as like a death in the family or a birth a wow. brand new baby being born to the family like immediate family um and that doesn't go away that sticks with you right uh so i, mean, I hope that's good enough way to yeah, explain that's a great the explanation. behind it i mean i yeah. don't want to go too crazy with that like if we do the voice overlay or video overlay of the psychedelic video and chat about that like that'll hit a lot on what you just asked got you got you all right. Well, uh, where do you want to take it now? You you say you have some notes. I don't want to. I don't want to just veer away from well, the notes. On the, <laughs> on the video, uh, I, I I notated four areas uh, of very good talking points. Uh, minutes minute two fifteen, minute six thirty, uh, minute fifteen, and minute twenty. Okay. And each area is about two or so minutes long. All right. And the minute the minute two thirty or two fifteen kicks off about like the comparison of how we grow from kid to adult and how the default mode network works. Six thirty is kind of like the science of what this actually what what the substance actually does, and it talks about the serotonin antagonist stuff. Uh, and then fifteen talks about kind of the last little bit I said there about the yeah. experience itself and its purpose. And then minute twenty kind of goes a little deeper into why people are afraid to use it, why pharma is afraid does for us to have it. And so I believe so on and so on and so on. Okay. Um, How you, you know, perceive. Unfortunately though, um, as we age, adults tend to think only in set neuronal networks. When a child is born, the child's brain operates very differently. The child uses a much larger neurological um, potential and capacity of their brain, they use very different signals in comparison to adults, very difficult, uh, very different neurological paths in comparison to adults. And that produces some weird effects. We should all agree, children are weird. They could fall a lot, they could ask weird questions and all that. And um, that's why they are weird, because they use very different neurological paths in comparison to adults. And I'm going to focus on one particular such neurological network in your brain. This is, this is the default mode network. And as you might have guessed, it is your default functioning mode inside of your brain. That is a default functioning network of neurons in your brain that is largely responsible for your human consciousness and perception as well. 
So this network is situated in your medial prefrontal cortex, which is somewhere around here, you can see on the picture, and your posterior cingulate cortex, which is somewhere around here, and they connect with the angular gyrus. Now, this network is active pretty much all the time. It's active anytime you're not engaged in a particular task. It's active um, when you're thinking about yourself, when you're thinking about other selves, when you are engaging in detailed memory recall and moral reasoning, when you are giving judgments and labels and evaluations to yourself and to others and, you know, to society and all that. And um, whenever you think about the future or the past as well. That's fascinating. I don't yeah. Know, could you hear it? Yeah, I heard it. It's fine. Uh, awesome. I muted myself just in case there's any feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so that's that's the first little bit, honestly. Like the default mode network, like that's that box that we get trapped in as we age. And that is, it, he, he kind of talks about it later on in the talk. He said that we don't have that default mode network as kids. And I'm paraphrasing. We don't have that default mode network as kids. And <laughs> we recognize that when that default mode network kicks in, we've grown up. And it's a terrible thing. And the fact that he used that phrase, it's a terrible thing, really sticks out to me. It's like, wait a minute. Growing up is a terrible thing. Does that mean society defines growing up? Right. Culture, whatever, so on and so on. Uh, interesting, yeah? Yeah, man. And I'm curious your take on that, honestly. Per well, particularly the part where you're using you're using this substance to sort of alter those things, you know? Um, I, I wonder, I wonder, I know that's not exactly what you're talking about, but I wonder what, I wonder what the long-term effects of something like that is, you know? So right, right now the long-term effects are nothing but positive right, right. now. Again, really. And I think that the next one, the next video piece is the research aspect, or maybe that's minute 15, one of the two. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, there's no negative effects at all the long-term effects are he actually does say later i don't have this marked but i'm so glad you said that because one treatment session uh, within a clinical setting people who have severe ptsd anxiety etc uh, even uh, a, a, a bipolar disorder they will have no signs symptoms etc for at least at least gene six months hmm. that's one session and then feeling pretty damn good for half a year that's compared crazy. to wanting to to harm yourself every damn day right right that that's wild yeah that is um it, it's I, mean, I can confidently tell you that i can relate 100 to everything he's saying and on the here's an example i'll use and um i'm, I'm gonna throw myself out there on this regard and uh, this may upset some people or not and it is what it is i'm doing what i need to do for my family but yeah. During, a, during a, a, an actual trip, like traveling to a place, I was in Southern Florida and I, I, I did a, 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 I call it a session for myself, uh, just, a, just a micro session, if you will. And it was, I was in the perfect mindset, I guess. The day was beautiful. You know, it's a tropical day in late October in, in yeah. Florida. It's nice. I look up in the, into the sky and Gene, I could dissociate or differentiate the colors not in the clouds, but in the sky, like you could see the rainbow spectrum, like in the Pink Floyd album. Yeah, yeah. The light hits the prism. Huh. Like that's what I could see. And then I look out into the ocean and I see some like splashing and whatnot. It, it looked like a feeding frenzy. I didn't know what animal. So I turned <laughs> to my wife. It was about 200 yards off the, 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 the beach. Right. So I turned to my wife. I'm like, hey, can I go out there? <laughs> she said, she said, just don't go alone. <laughs> <laughs> So I turned to a dude next to me who I'd met. I said, "Hey, and he's a former Army Ranger." I was like, "Hey, we go for a swim." He goes, "Yeah." <laughs> so we grabbed, we each grabbed a boogie board, swam 200 yards out to a dolphin feeding frenzy. Right. Like we got within 10 feet of a few dolphins. <laughs> it was super cool. And we I had no fear, man. It right. was the most magical thing I've ever been a part of in, in recent time. Well, other than my children being born and so on and so on, but I can confidently tell you that. I felt so much euphoria during that time. And yeah. not only did the sensation of the water just feel so magical against my being, like just, just the fact that, bro, that could have been a feeding friends like bull sharks. And right. Mom, <laughs> I, I didn't care. <laughs> right. 
just the, the fear of like nothing that might have well, worked it out. It wasn't a fear of like, hard. you know, nothing's going to happen if I go out there. It's like, yeah. you know, something might happen, but I'm going to check this out because it could be absolutely life changing. And it kind of was. So, what did that, yeah, I was going to say, what did that do for you? I've come to really appreciate a lot more things. Uh, like I still have a temper, but it has plummeted significantly. Um, <clears throat> that, this is a really weird connection to make with it, but that little 200 yard swim out into the middle of the ocean with a bunch of dolphin eat, consuming some fish made me try to recognize my closest people more yeah. and forced me to recognize the other side of everyone's stories. There's always two sides to a story. Mm. You know, oh, I coach yeah. a bunch of little kids. You know how little kids are, especially yeah. during daylight savings time. Right. Through daylight savings time, by the way, when you have children. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, kids behave uniquely. They push your buttons. Right. You know, being a teacher, I mean, you, you've taught in a dojo long enough. Yeah, you yeah. probably had kids go through, right? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. So it, it gets taxing. Yeah. Well, you know, ever since then, I've come to find out. Oh, little Johnny here, his dad's dying. And that's why he can't think very well because his mind's always wrapped around his father passing away at any given point without any warning. Mm. Or Josephina over here, you know, their mom and dad just got divorced and her, her mom or dad or whatever parent like gives her no attention or, or abuses her. Yeah. Her grandma and grandpa got to take care of her. You know, there's stories like that. And then there's yeah. other ones like, Oh, there, there's uh, uh, Tommy over here that just crapped his pants. You know, like you don't, there's silly ones like that too, but that all impacts the kid differently. Yeah. And because of that, you no, know, my, my, my youngest pushes my buttons the most as of right now. And I come, I find myself like after getting upset with her, like, man, that was inappropriate, not necessary. Mm -hmm. How can we change for the next time? Cause it's too late. It's in the past. It's done. Right. How right. can I help her now understand? Like I just dropped her off a of preschool she spilled her milk or something like, come on, man. Like, what were you doing? You know, yeah. Why yeah, yeah. now? Why was I crying over spilled milk? <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably the car smell like vomit, but yeah, you no, know, well. it's a thing of it's it, that whole journey brought, brought much more awareness, right? Like aut autonomous awareness, aut automatic awareness, whatever my degree of autonomy of, a, of being aware. Hmm. <laughs> just remarkably accelerated. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and for the record, if it were bull sharks, it'd probably turn out a little bit differently for you. Yes. Yes. It would have. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't be here. I would be, yeah, I, I would yeah. be in the ocean somewhere still. <laughs> probably Did you have another, time. you had another timestamp. Yeah. Uh, it was six minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, this talks about, excitement. When you consume. Yeah. This, this talks about what the, so, the metabolized component of psilocybin, psilocin, that's that's the that's the molecule that uh, does the work in your brain. Okay. So uh, back, if you don't mind, back it up to like six twenty-five. All right. Yeah. So that way, yeah. Okay. And that is the psilocybin uh, mushroom. You might see psilocin underneath. Well, psilocin is the active ingredient in psilocybin. When you consume. Uh, a psychoactive, you know, mushroom, um, psilocybin breaks down in your stomach and psilocin is what does the magic. So that's where the magic in magic mushrooms comes from. <laughs> and um, I said that they are serotonin receptor agonists. Well, what that means is that they don't agonize, you know, you know uh, your receptors or do harm to them. What they do is that they bind with them, you know? The psilocin molecule, there's a picture for you here. The psilocin molecule is an exact replica of your serotonin molecule, which you produce by yourself. It's an exact replica in nature. It's as if nature was playing copy and paste with that. Hmm. And the way it binds with the receptor is absolutely magnificent because it doesn't do any harm to the receptor, doesn't cause toxicity or anything, no tissue damage and all that. And it's the exact same copy of serotonin. That's it's really cool. Pretty Fascinating. Yeah, yeah that, so that's, it doesn't be, that's beyond cool. Right. Um, like, it's, it really makes you wonder, what the hell are they feeding us when they didn't even know that information at the beginning? Like, you know that all the reason I don't know if you know this, but the research within, within the psychedelic studies started like in the 50s or beforehand by a Swedish right. researcher. 
And then uh, the, the the some local dude over here got the the mushrooms from a Native American lady, and he completely shattered and destroyed her world after he came mm. out saying, "Yeah, I did this, and I experienced that." And then it was like, oh, "The devil's fungus," <laughs> you know, devil's stuff like that. It's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Sorry, yeah. but uh, yeah, that that the, the the fact that the molecule is identical to what we already naturally produce that just goes that that is defense in, enough in itself to be like, okay. It's like taking creatine right. for recovery right. or eating eating protein for muscle building or take vitamin C so you have an immune system or some shit. I don't know. You, those are silly examples. but Well, you, I mean, you're talking about mushrooms. Mm -hmm. They are a naturally occurring thing mm -hmm. in our environment. And right? remarkably important. It, it's not, it's not uh, chemically right. created. <laughs> see the good and all things yeah i mean it's not created in a lab no know? it's like even though even though lsd is it's it's interesting how it still has similar components mm -hmm. to the to the mushroom from the standpoint of like mental health related stuff but psilocybin is just absolutely phenomenal psilocin specifically is absolutely phenomenal but the fact that like this is this modern research now has actually opened up the door for a lot of mushroom based involvement in mm -hmm. understanding in today's society, uh, this where like I don't know the Joe Rogan podcast, the Alpha Brain stuff, right? Like, that's got lion's mane in it, yeah, which is a mushroom. And then like uh, uh, Andrew Huberman's the uh, thesis, take right. thesis supplements type of deal, like for, for cognitive function and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That stuff's pretty baller too, because it's kind of the same crap. By the way, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just kind of speaking about it. It'd be nice if we were. I do take I do take um, Alpha Brain and I take New Mood. Nice man, New Mood's good. I do both of those. Um, have, you, have you do you notice a difference? Uh, I, do. Oh, I do. Yeah. Um, I do. I, I, I use the um, the uh, soluble mixture in a drink. Nice, and, dude. Uh, so like an hour or so before I do a podcast, I do I do definitely take one of those. I'll save it and take that. And then, um, uh, yeah, awesome. I definitely I notice my focus is different. Um, really? And it's different than when I do coffee. Like yeah, I used to do caffeine like, binding is so, so much different. Yeah, so um, it is definitely different. And the new moves new. I have only been, I only got that uh, a sample of that. Somebody sent me a sample. I've only been doing it for about a month, um, but I do notice, I do notice. Uh, uh, I don't want to say I'm calmer because I'm not like a worked up person normally, but um, <laughs> I do notice that I, it feels like it. You know. Okay, that's really cool feedback, honestly, because we have it, and I've been waiting to like get the quote unquote ideal set up because i want to do a case study on myself with it and yeah. like document everything and try to get blood work done and whatnot which is gonna be a bit of a trial because this is a quick tangent but i'm now the head coach and owner of the gainesville wild team mm -hmm. so we'll have to talk about that a little later off air wow. and uh, owner interesting yeah very <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, it's a positive thing but yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that off air but um yeah. The setup of it all, because I actually have some of Huberman's supplements too, the take thesis supplements. I'm not going to do like a comparison, a comparative analysis between the two of them, which is kind of like, okay, of all of these ingredients within these pills, which based off empirical research is the most ideal combination. Right. And then I'll, I'll stop taking my Adderall and Vyvanse for a little while and then see what stems from there. Um, but dude, that's awesome that you, that you can noticeably see a difference. Right. Like for you specifically, that, that's pretty baller. You're yeah. The first person I've met that like has been able to actually, let me rephrase. You have the ability to be conscious of the change. Well, I'm kind of like you, I think, um, in the self experiment realm, I will nice. definitely, um, try things. Uh, a lot of times, you know, with diet and stuff like that, like I, I don't, you know, I, I own a gym and then we have clients and I, I feel weird recommending things to people that I don't have any personal experience with. Or that's illegal. <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely don't do that. But by the way, um, we're not pushing illicit material upon anyone. We're just educating you. But like, you know, diets, for example, like I would never oh, yeah. I've never done the carnivore diet, you know, yeah. so I've had people ask me about it and I have to tell them, well, here are some resources. I've never done it. I can't speak about it. Um Good on you, man. A lot of people don't have that wherewithal. I try. I try not to be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a coffee mug that just that says that? Try not yeah, to be a dick so. or something like that. Don't be a dick. Um, so you got another one? You have yes, another 15 minutes. Thumbs up or something. Very scary and it's very weird. And it's life changing in a way. 
it's eye-opening, people have said. So I want to very briefly mention something about psychedelics here. It's very important to acknowledge the set and setting that you take them in. Set refers to how you feel in life at the moment, whether you feel love, whether you feel accepted, whether you're at peace with yourself. And setting refers to your instant environment and the comfort of that and the safety of your instant environment. So these are critical for your experience. You should not approach them lightly. You should never approach a psychedelic substance lightly. These have been used only in spiritual and religious environment, and these have no place on our recreational table. Mm -mm. We've got enough stuff out there anyway. So in terms of perceptional changes, people have reported amazing stuff, ranging from you know um, a complete level on which colors are perceived, Colors are actually felt during this experience. You're not seeing them with the eyes. You feel the colors. Wow. That's something very difficult to put into words. The whole trip is very difficult to put into words. These are just references that we're using here. In terms of perception, people have reported open and closed eyes visuals. So what that means is that you can't really get away uh, from the experience and what you're seeing by closing your eyes, because you will still be seeing stuff when you close your eyes. And what you're going to be seeing is going to be uh, taking the form of very complex geometrical patterns, symbols, and very, very vivid imagery. Memory recall on these substances is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And what people have also uh, mentioned is that they had a feeling of loss of self. And that's kind of normal when the DMN is not active. All concepts of self are blown out of the window and you realize how, how little the self really means and we are so, so attached to ourselves, aren't we? It's really bad. And um, people have also reported losses of concept of time. And that's something that you can't really put into words and just explain to people, you know, I can't feel time anymore. It's mind blowing what happens to your brain when you take the time perception out of the equation. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And um, in terms of emotions, people have felt, they reported actually extremes of emotions. So people either felt extreme love, happiness, euphoria, connectedness, um, acceptance of, of you know, themselves and everyone and all that. And at the same time, you could get severe panic attacks, you could get paranoia, you could get... Um, you know, just unpleasant feelings, but really bad ones um, during the experience. And once the experience is gone, you're pretty much, you know, back to normal. But with a new perspective, you, you've gained something that you can't really see <laughs> the rest of the time. In terms of general well-being and impressions, people have reported a very deep spiritual understanding of themselves and of others. And they've finally come to, um, to like, peace. With, with, with who they are and what they are doing in life. So it kind of, kind of gives you the, yeah, that's, that's cray cray. Yeah. That, that last little, I, I love the community. This is my puppy. Uh. <laughs> this is Jane. Say hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, this is, uh, my wife's pup. She uh -huh. rescued her, but she's a Husky lab mix. 50-50. Anyway, that uh, guy smile. Yeah. That uh, <clears throat> that piece that he hit on, like, Gene, the reason I wanted that to be played a little longer or I requested that is because everyone needs to really understand the full spectrum of what a session is like. Now, he, he was obviously talking about, thank you, obviously talking about like anecdotal expo experiences by people. Right. But the, the, the biggest takeaway there is their impressions of themselves their acceptance of themselves. And now he listed out the good, the great, the good, the even, and the horrible. Like I will, I will not say who I witnessed partake in this session. Um, but I was able to witness a psilocybin assisted therapy session, uh, in, in full clinical detail. And this person had an entire breakdown, severe panic attack. And, mm. This is where the key uh, component of being a, a <laughs> I, I will say, I will say well-read and effective psilocybin assisted therapist or, or psychedelic okay. assisted therapist to help them through that distress. Sure. Because it's understanding the type of language that person needs and support, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this person was convulsing uncontrollably. It's almost like having a seizure mm. and like they were having a literal internal war 
on a battlefield. Um, it, it was very heartbreaking. However, like you said, they were completely back to normal at the end of the session four hours later. And the next day, the follow-up, the next day, next couple of days, actually the next morning because they stayed the night in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the clinic, um, the next day, their takeaway was remarkable. Uh, they had a lot more acceptance of themselves and they, they their their breakthrough is kind of like what I said about myself a little earlier, the acceptance of others and the willingness to hear the other stories of what people are going through. And like that, that part was really, really cool. Hmm. Um, but yeah, th that's a personal one that I saw, but it was exactly what he said on the bad well, side. Well, the, but, yeah, yeah, well, but it was well, a very positive thing. Very, very positive thing. It's like you said earlier though. I mean, it's, it's, it's individual and it's based on your, uh, inputs your experience right i mean if you've had i mean i imagine someone with a certain level of ptsd from say combat in a war zone they're going to bring some negative uh emotions oh, absolutely <laughs> into something like that you the know crazy part about that is it doesn't have to be in a war zone it could be a fort hood maybe edited that part out <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah it could be anywhere i mean it, well it could be you know your your dad beating the crap out of you or something like yeah. regularly i mean or a poop witnessing, yeah you're gonna bring that negative uh emotion into that yeah you call it a trip um so i said at the beginning like this the 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 mindset and setting are very yeah. very important so the right. first hour ish of a session the person takes the 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 the, the medication if you will quote unquote yeah and then the next 45 minutes to an hour is talking about okay what fabric feels the best to you? What what type of clothing? Baggy or uh, saggy, uh, uh, mm. form fitting? None at all. Whatever. Um, what what's going to help you bring the most joy and comfort right at this very second without even thinking about it? Right. Once you establish that, you find the music. Okay, is this the music you want? No, I don't want that. So on and so on and so on. That first forty five minutes to an hour is remarkably critical. Right. You've got to get them comfortable. I mean, you've got to get them. Now, I want to I want to express real quick that this is not a, a dire thing. Like, oh, my God, like you have to do it this way. Otherwise, it's just going to be a, a hellacious experience. Like you know, the experience is going to be hellacious, whether you like it or not. <laughs> it, it's going it, and that's just going up the definition of hellacious, not the societal one. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be a scary experience at some point. Um whether you're in a remarkable mindset or not, Gene, like I told you, like I said in the last one, like I've done it with both mindsets mm. and I can confidently tell you the bad mindset taught me the most. Um, Oh, there's another one. Um, buddy I'm surrounded by him. Yeah. It's my cat. All right. I have another, well, you've met our other dog, Kyle, yeah. I think, but he's, yeah. he's too old to walk 10 feet. So, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um, you have another you have another time yeah time? minute 20 and i believe a minute 20. i uh, know at minute 20 sorry and i don't recall how long this one is i'll just kind of do the same thing give you a stop like i i strongly encourage gene on all the videos i sent you from the educational standpoint of like why you're we're doing this conversation yeah i encourage everyone to watch this video so this is Rick. Depression and anxiety were gone for up to six months after one use, after one, one experience with a psychedelic. And um, it's, it kind of becomes obvious by, by now why these are illegal and why, you know, pharmaceuticals and especially antidepressants in the Western world is such a big thing. Because you see most antidepressants out there and anxiety relievers, they affect the exact same area of the brain, the serotonin receptor. But instead of binding with it and then exciting the receptor, they regulate the way you reuptake serotonin. And this is just not good. This is just not good. It causes toxicity, it causes, uh, it causes harm to tissues. And none of those pharmaceuticals can provide long-term effects after a single use. Absolutely none of them. And um, yeah, so that kind of makes it obvious why these have so much stigma around them and why they are still kept illegal, which is ridiculous. They've got nothing to do with an illegal recreational substance. There is also no evidence of a... Yeah. Illegality. Ugh. 
sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. That good. little piece there where it says there is no evidence of addiction. Uh, right. That's that is something that people can watch on their own because that's a hard thing to really. They need to be able to try to figure out how to interpret that themselves. This right. is Rick. Hey, Rick. <laughs> you can guess how he was named Rick. Yes. <laughs> Rick and Morty. <laughs> He's a good boy. Yeah. What do you think of that, man? Like that little piece. Like that's, I, I know he kind of talked about like why Big Pharma wants it to be illegal. And he just kind of said why in a shorthand. But yeah, like that's kind of the conclusion, if you will, of like the whole educational yeah. aspect of it in the shorthand, uh, like extreme shorthand. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, I think it's something that more of us need to explore. That's the whole reason I'm talking to you. Um, yeah, and I wish it were. I mean, I, I feel like it's getting there. I mean, it, it's it's more people are talking about it. You know, the, if the more of us talk about it, the more we'll destigmatize it. Um, drugs, Absolutely. drugs have such a huge stigma. Yeah, it's um, so. There's a chart that he pulls up. I don't remember the minute mark. Otherwise, I would ask you to pull it up just so everyone can see it. But they place. The, the the LSD and psilocybin or psilocin on the the uh, um, what's it called the addicted or right. addiction spectrum and alcohol air, heroin cocaine alcohol is the worst alcohol and nicotine are the two worst <sighs> right I mean they're at the very front and they're perfectly fine yeah it's so strange I mean it's I mean we're the most we commercially can, available what's that I mean, but alcohol and nicotine are the most commercially available. That's true. Um, I, mean, I do know that, like, well, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yes, that is true. I'll leave it at that. I mean, <laughs> the the piece about it that bothers me though is just like it, it's it just seems so inhumane to allow it. I mean, I know the prohibition and whatnot. They tried to make alcohol illegal and stuff. So yeah, yeah, sure, it's a bad idea to make it illegal. But maybe if if there's an ability for people to educate themselves like what you and I are doing in this sense. And honestly, thousands of other people, yeah. especially now that like the government did fund the, the psychedelic research uh, in Texas for, for veterans who have PTSD for the first time in 50 years, like yeah. that's magnificent. Well, the only thing I'm concerned about in that sense is, okay, now what's big pharma going to do with the psilocybin pill or the psilocin pill? How are they going to alter it? Right. So yeah, well, we're going to hear my daughter in the background. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I mean, they're going to try to synthesize it, I'm sure. Yeah. And that's, I do know that there, so there, there's a swimmer on our team. Um, he, his dad works for a company here in uh, Eastern Georgia. And we kind of talked a little bit like they're, they're changing the, I believe the like gelatin of the capsule or something like that, that Oxycontin mm -hmm. goes in, that is mm -hmm. in to where it actually will not allow you to OD on Oxycontin. Which is awesome. I guess. I find that hard theory. to believe. But, huh? I find that hard to believe. But Oh, I do too. But he did show me the science behind it. So like for the moment, I'm he's a really good dude. He does not value lying at all. He would he's not a BS or one bear. Sure. Um and that's of course me speaking subjectively. He could be. It could be a defense well, attorney. Okay. No, I'm kidding. No offense <laughs> to those defense attorneys out there. Um uh, I mean, what is it like you eat enough of it, it makes you sick or something? I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, I'm not really sure, honestly. Uh, he, it was so difficult for me to wrap my mind around because, yeah. okay, it's great that it doesn't make you OD on it. However, you're still taking it. Yeah, you're, you're still going to be ad addicted. I'm glad we we're at least able to educate some people on this if they choose to listen to it yeah. uh, and that it's not just us pushing illicit material because that's not the case in the <laughs> least. Yeah, I'm not uh, selling anything. No, not at all. I mean, we just want people to do that. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> Do that. Be a part of this. Yes. If they can see it. They can. Um, well, that was great. Um, we need to keep, we need to do another one. I would love to do a part three if you're cool with it. I um, am. Let's do it. It be a little less educational and a little more yeah. fun loving or you need it. like. You need mm -hmm. to break it. I'm glad we broke that video down. That that was cool. Um, oh, I would love to follow up with like the Carl Jung and Alan Watts stuff. I, I'm interested in the, the shadow, the shadow self. Um, yeah. Okay. Part three is the shadow. Yeah. Because I've, that's actually a great spot because what the 15 minute mark he's talking about, you know, the sensation of the colors and whatnot, that's yeah. in your subconscious. 
and your subconscious is where you're going to meet your shadow archetype. And mm. I'm going to leave it at shadow archetype because that's like a next time on Dragon Ball Z. Moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've I've got a mentor of mine, uh, Mark Devine. He's a, a retired SEAL commander, the SEAL fit guy. He nice. talks about he talks about the shadow self all the time. Um, I believe it. And that's really uh, cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but I don't fully really understand it. <laughs> What's that? I don't fully understand it. So it's um, a you, Gene. You would have to live it to understand yeah. it. Right, and, um, and I like, like I most a, things in life, right? A Navy SEAL has probably lived it, and oh, I I would be shocked. If, if <laughs> you know, happened. active, um, active dude. They, I'd be down to do like a three-way, nice uh, conversation. Because <laughs> 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 like I, I've personally gone through it, yeah. um, and you know my journey was honestly quite terrifying there for a little while, and I'm going to give my wife all sorts of props for helping me get out of it. That's awesome. Um, she she was the primary primo catalyst for actually is probably the catalyst for me of being okay with my shadow now but yeah again next time on dragon ball z let's do that let's do that okay. i want to i want to dig into that one that i will tell you i listen to i watch those videos the most like i watched that one twice i believe it, it um, it's badass yeah it's good stuff um well thanks man that was a good breakdown um Hopefully the videos come out. If not, I'll, I'll make sure we get those integrated into this thing because I think it's important. Um, okay. Education, man. That's right. <laughs> All right, dude. Part three coming up. Hell yeah. Love you, buddy.